Well, it's Monday night. That means it is time for Dylan Talks Tone on the YouTubes. We have a cool show tonight. We're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. We're going to talk about Kemper stuff. We're going to talk about cigar boxes. We're going to talk about wiring. We're going to talk about switches. It's going to be fun. How is everybody doing tonight? I would say that we are live. That means we are live. How's it going out there in YouTube land? I hope everybody's having a good week since the last time we were live. I actually also have this weird close-up view of my face that we'll use later for uh, some putting my head in a box kind of stuff because we have some interesting things to talk about. We're going to talk about uh, switches tonight. So this came up a couple of times this week about switches. So what is the difference between double pull, double throw, and single pull, double throw, and on, 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 off, on, on, on? Like there's all kinds of different like categories and setups and what would you use for what and why would you use it when and that sort of stuff. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're also going to do a live demo of a of series versus parallel. We're going to talk about that because I'm, and I'm going to give you some wiring diagrams and then we'll probably make those available in a blog post later. And we're going to talk about Kemper stuff because I changed my Kemper setup. Wait till you hear it. It sounds amazing. I would recommend getting some earbuds or a big stereo because it sounds real good. So that's kind of what we have on tap for tonight. I want everybody to know right away uh, that our show is brought to you in part tonight by Randy's Luthier Palace. He is a guitar repair and setup man in Greenfield, Indiana with over 40 years of experience. Randy can take care of your setups, your fret leveling, rewiring, new pots, Floyd Rose stuff, all kinds of stuff. Check out Randy's work on his Facebook page at facebook.com slash guitar physician. I still love that name and wish I had that. And his website at randysluthierpalace.com. If you are not in the Indianapolis area, which is right about where he is, you can talk to him about shipping because he works on many, many guitars at a time for a lot of people. So uh, thank you for your support, Randy. And um, yeah, so that's, that's that. And then um, the other thing is, if you're new to this channel, we do guitar tech stuff. We talk about guitar stuff. We talk about tone. We talk about marketing. We talk about how to make your how to make you sound good and how to make it to where you can be successful and enjoy and be inspired by playing your instrument. Okay, so that's what we do. Uh, Leslie is right over here, and she's doing some very cool stuff. So tell them what they can do and where they're watching and all that kind of stuff. So we are live on kprlive.com. We are also live on youtube.com forward slash Dylan Talks Tone. There is a live chat there where you'll find a great community that's building. And you can chat with us, ask questions if you have them, and just hang out. Um, and just for the record, if you're listening, I do moderate as Dylan Talks Tone for this show only. So. Yeah, so she acts as me and kicks out scary people and takes care of all the nice people and most most everybody's nice. We've had to take care of a couple of mean people once in a while, but not very often. Um, a couple things, speaking of mean people, um, I've got a lot of hate lately on uh, Dylan Talk's tone about our random live stuff that we've been doing throughout the week. Which is really weird. So uh, we went ahead and we did some fun stuff about that. Um, and we're going to talk a bit more about that in the next couple of weeks. Where you're going to see a little bit of shift in how uh, our content comes out. And how it comes out in a more effective way. So we're going to have new content three times a week. This is I'm just going to do it on a schedule. We're going to have content Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Monday, always the live show, right? That's what we do every Monday. 
And then what we're also going to do is we're going to have a new video on Wednesday, which I believe is going to be some sort of um, review. There's going to be some some kind of like more subjective stuff. It's uh, one of our viewers, our good viewers, um, and actually he's one of our kind of associate producer level patrons on Patreon, um, gave me the great idea of having like a what do you think Wednesday. So everything that we we put out on Wednesday is more subjective. Like here's a few thing, here's a few ways to do things. Um, and the, you know, there's a couple of different options. Here's a couple of different options and ways to do things. This is one way of doing it. What do you think? What do you want to do? How do you use this, you know, in your rig and your tone and stuff. And then maybe on Friday, um, and this was also Alan, uh, one of our patrons on Patreon, um, one of his ideas too on Friday was make it more technical, like at the bench, like we're fixing something. So I, I thought that was a good kind of balance of, you know, fun new stuff on Wednesdays and get super technical and kind of nerd out about the gear on Fridays. So what do you all think of that? Let me know what you think of that in the comments. Um, and if you want to be a part of that whole experience, um, one of the things you can do is go over to patreon.com slash Dylan talks tone. And there's a way for you to actually be kind of a more of an active part of the, the creator experience. Cause I think what we're going to do, well, I know what we're going to do is we're actually, uh, there's a way over there on that Patreon deal where you're going to actually, we're going to have a Google meeting every month or it might be a zoom or whatever. There's going to be a meeting like with video, like like Brady Bunch boxes, like we're all going to be in Brady Bunch boxes and we're going to decide uh, what content we want to come out with over the next month. And so we're going to do that once a month. And I think that's going to be really, really fun. Um, and then um, that way, that way I kind of have a, a more balanced approach to this stuff. And I'm not just sitting there thinking, hmm, what should tonight's show be about? Hmm, what should Wednesday be about? Like, you are all out in the world playing. You're all out in the world gigging and, and doing things and, and really active out there doing stuff. And you know what's going on and you have questions and you see them in the groups and Facebook and all that stuff. You know what's going on. And so uh, it, I think it's awesome to kind of help allow you guys to come on in and be a part of that. So that's over at that uh, patreon.com slash Dylan Talks Tone. That's where that that part lives and then we'll we'll make kind of a monthly thing out of it. I think it'll be fun. Um okay. Well, how's it going? They are digging the plan by the way. Are they? Yes. So the kind of the what do you think kind of more subjective stuff or on more Wednesday? So the the Monday, Wednesday, Friday just a set schedule. They said it would be easier to find things. They like the idea. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, easier to search for stuff and and if I keep it better categorized that way, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, I had this whole vision for a long time of like, if you had a question today, I could make a video about it tomorrow, you know, like, but since we're up to like thousands and thousands of people now, and we're literally thousands of views a day, and it's just getting to be, there's over 300 videos or something right now. And so I think doing this in a more, you know, a more kind of organized way will be, will be better. I'm glad you all dig it. That's very, very cool. And uh, again, thank you, Alan, for being a patron, patron over there on Patreon and, um, and, and being a part of the creative process and giving me some of those ideas because I'm literally using. And actually, we're going to put his name in the credits. When, when somebody gives me an idea that we can use, we're going to actually put their name in the credits of the videos. So we're going to start kind of really recognizing everybody that, is such an active participant in what we're doing. I just, I don't know. I think it's better that we're all a big group kind of doing this together and it makes it way more fun. So, um, so to digress a little bit, yeah, you're not as spiffy tonight. I've already gotten that. I'm not. Cause you know, last week you were dressed up and they thought I was ready for bed. Yeah. I have to delete some comments about that sometimes. And I'm drinking a margarita. I don't usually drink <clears throat> alcoholic beverages on the radio, but, or on the YouTubes, but 
tonight. But when he I, does. But when I do, it's in a humongous red cup. No, you know, or I also spill it. Remember that one time? For those of you that have been with me for a oh while. Oh my gosh. Remember yeah. I spilled. That was just the radio show. That was what? Oh, that's right. We didn't have video then. Mm-mm. No, that's true. Well, I tell you what. What do people want to do? Let's talk about... Uh, some Kemper stuff. You want to hear some sounds? I mean, that's why we're all here, right? Um, we want to hear guitar things. So, um, you know, I have this thing over here, this Kemper, powered Kemper. And uh, speaking of spilling stuff, see that little drip right over there? You can't probably can't see it on the radio, but on the YouTubes. But I brought this out to a gig one time. It was out for one song and someone spilled a beer on it. And then that's what those drips are right there. So how come you never cleaned them up? I thought I did, but maybe they were more <laughs> sticky than they, they appeared. So the, that's why I never, ever brought that out. Um, the other thing is we're going to have to come up with some new amp ideas because I sold all my amps. So I'm actually down to just the Kemper uh, just this couple days ago. One of our good, uh, one of our followers on Facebook bought one of my, bought my Vox MV50, the little baby, little baby amp. So that thing is gone. So I brought out tonight my cigar box guitar. Now, put your headphones on, listen to some good speakers, because let me tell you what, this new setup. What I was, I got sidetracked about the beer drips. This was set up in mono all this time. So every time we played guitar on the show and otherwise, it literally was in mono. And now it's in stereo. So you got to hear this. This is really, really good. Like, really good. There's a little rattle in it. Can you hear that? That is actually something inside the guitar rattling. I didn't realize I was doing that until just now. Okay, so the reason we brought this guitar out tonight, the reason I brought this particular one out, is because we want to talk about switching options. This has been a question that has come up a bunch of times. And this is the only guitar that I have that has series and parallel switching in the same guitar. So basically what we did was this guitar has a five-way switch in it for one single humbucker, okay? So what you're hearing right now is a humbucker. Okay, so there's that. Now, I'm going to play it in that mode, and then I'm going to switch it to parallel as I play. Now back to Hubbucker. So here's an interesting thing. It's two. So you can think of a humbucker as two pickups, right? So two single coils. And when they are in series, that is your normal humbucker situation. When they are in parallel, it's like having two pickups in the middle position on a telly. But 
they sound different when you put them right next to each other. So the tone doesn't change a whole lot from humbucker to parallel. That you have more power when they're in series than you do in parallel because of the overall output changes. They're both hum canceling, parallel and series, but parallel sounds a little bit more like a single coil. So, a lot of people like to go series parallel instead of coil splitting because you get that clarity of the single coil without the hum because it's still hum canceling. So, it's super, super cool. The wiring diagram for that looks a lot like this. So, this is... A double pull, double throw switch, and we're going to talk about the specifics of what, how those switches work later. And this is basically hooking up a humbucker like two pickups, but in the same switch. And it's changing it from parallel to series. And we will make this modify, we will make this available to you later. Uh, probably in a blog post on our website so you can have that unless you're good enough to like pause it and screenshot it later and replay but we'll, we'll put it in a blog post because we have a whole bunch of that stuff tonight uh, we'll probably put it together in a little course so people want to hear is there any way for you to fade the channels because some people think they're hearing it in mono still and they were curious if they could hear the okay. difference. Okay, so I was going to actually bring this up. I think what happens is you probably are hearing it in mono because I think the software we use and YouTube sums it back to one. So it's true stereo and then it sums it back to one. Let me, there is a way for me to toggle it though so I can show you the difference. Okay, so this is going to be true stereo coming from the Kemper into the board, but then I don't know what it does once it gets back to go out to the YouTubes. Okay, so this is the true stereo that you're hearing. Mm, let's use a different... So it's bouncing from like right channel to left channel. That is mono out right there. Now here's back to stereo. That is the difference between mono and stereo, just so you get the idea. Like I said, because of the way, I'm not really sure how it sums it, like what it does to sum it to go into the iPad, because iPads are not stereo. So I think it's like cramming it back into one. 
Didn't you make a video about this somewhere else? Um, we made we did a little live video. Um, Was that on an iPad too, though? Yeah. So you don't know what it's sounding like on the other side. Well, if I, so for instance, I'm going to make a live or I'm going to make a video. It's only when we do this live because we have to use the iPad to go out to the internet. So when I make a video for YouTube, like tomorrow I'm shooting a video for Tone Crate and um, that is going to be all true stereo in the mixer and then it's going to come out of the mixer into the computer and it's going to be all true stereo so it's going to sound huge because we have to go into the ipad ipads aren't stereo so it sums it back down but i didn't know if it let it go back out to youtube in stereo or not i wasn't sure so stay tuned over the next few days because i think on wednesday the wednesday's video is going to be a review of some um profiles from a company called tone crate and i think so at this point and so that's all going to be true stereo through the board and then out to youtube so let me know when you watch that video what you think in comparison to what you heard tonight if you were here because um yes fair point i can understand why you guys were asking that um very interesting stuff let's see it is 920. What else they got going over there? Anything? Any other questions? Mm, no, because they were just trying to understand the sound. Um, Randy said if he has a phaser pedal that will let you phase the quarter note and send it from left to right channel. So he was asking if you had a way to do that. Um, I do have a way to do that. But I don't think I can show you. I don't know. I mean, my roto. That's my rotary from from Keeley. Let's talk about switches uh, because this is a big confusing thing, and I'm going to show you some pictures, and we're going to make it easier. So if you have questions about what kind of switches you use or should use for a particular application, uh, we'll talk about that. So let's get into what these things are. Um, and let me see if I can do this correctly. So. All right, let me show you this. So here we have my head in a box. Uh, we have a couple of different switches here. We have the two way double pull, double throw on the top in an on on. We have a three way double pull, double throw on 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 in the middle. And we have a three-way double pull, double throw on, off, on, on the bottom. So people were asking me today because we added the top one to our website. So see how that works? Now, here's how this is, here's how you're gonna do this, basically. Um, the on, on puts the two top sets, well, let me, let me explain this first. Double pull, double throw just means, let's talk about that first. Let's just talk about double pull, double throw and single pull, sing, single, single pull, double throw. Okay. First of all, this right here is a single pull, double throw switch. Okay. See how it has three tabs on the bottom. Okay. So that is a single pull, double throw. Now this one is exactly the same thing, but it's double pull, double throw. See, or double pull, double, yeah. How it has two rows. What this means, and here's the, this is the 
the, this is why I wanted to show you the picture of the actual switch because you know you have one row versus two rows, right? So now when we're looking at this, the two rows up and down, so the rows going up and down this way, those ro rows are kind of like separated from side to side. They're doing the same thing. So the left three on the top switch, the left three rows, the left three are doing the same thing as the right three. What this means is you can hook up two of something to the same switch and give it the same function. So that's a lot of times how that'll work. So you could put, let's say, and, and the middle one, you notice that the middle one always stays hooked up. So like, for instance, I would make that my output of the switch. And then the end to the switch could be something from one side and then something from the other side. The other thing you could do is ground uh, the bottom row of pins and not the other. And then it would make it to where it was um, like a kill switch. We'll show you that in a minute. So there's a couple of different ways that you can use that one. Now, the, the middle one is... A little bit different because it kind of does this funny crisscross thing so this is on 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 all of these switches are on but you're hooked to something different every time and in fact the top one is on on unless you short one side out okay so we'll show you that in a minute then these ones are on 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 but you notice how it crisscrosses in the middle so you have to take note of that when you are hooking some when you're using that and then on off on is where I would typically take whatever I've got coming in. Uh, that'd be out. So the middle would be the middle would be out and the sides would be from one place, one side from one place and the other side from the other place. And so then you would have one thing on when it was all the way one way. You had one or the other thing on when it was all the way the other way and neither of them on when it was in the middle. Remember that the double pole part, so the two rows, means, again, in this case, that the sides are independent from each other. So you could hook up two different things to do the same thing on the same switch. Double pole, double throw. That's what that stands for. So... Um, it's these are it's one of these things where you just have to have this drawing handy and just like look at it when you're when you're wiring something say okay I want the signal to go from here into there and then out and I don't want it to work when the switch is in this position it's one of the I still to this day no matter what I wire up I literally have to look at this drawing and like visualize what I'm trying to do and so, and we actually get a lot of questions about this. I get people asking me questions. So let's talk about some some <clears throat> practical things that you can do with some of these switches. Is there any questions over there yet? I can ask you them, but I don't understand them. So okay, ask um, me them. People wanted to understand, and I think you got a little more detailed. So some people are like, "Yeah, thanks." Um, somebody said, "Why would you have them perform the same thing?" Uh, okay. That's a great question. Why would you have them perform the same thing? <clears throat> you could have, uh, two pickups hooked up to the same switch that would turn off and on at the same time. You could have one or two pickups be on a kill switch. You could have, um, that's typically it is you'll have you could, you could a lot of times have, I've had, um, I'll give you an example of an on. So let's see if we're looking at this right here and on, on, on switch I've used with, do you remember those? Um, oh, okay. A good example of an on, on, on switch could be if you had it hooked up to where you had your outside coils on your, you had two humbuckers and you had your outside coils on when the switch was one way. And then you had them both on in the middle. And then you had one of them on. Then you had the inside ones on when it was the other way. 
that's that's an excellent example of having two things doing the same thing at the same time. Uh, that would be that would be a good example of that. Great question, actually. That's and somebody said, I want to put a kill switch on my strap, but I don't know where to put it. And Randy told him put it easiest reach so you don't have to reposition your hand yep so i'm gonna somebody else that was exactly the very next thing i was going to check this out here we go yeah exactly so uh so let's talk about kill switches because this is kind of the fun first simple thing that everybody likes to try to do right so these are these are kind of fun so oh of course i put that in the wrong place so what you have here is because I changed that. Okay, see the switch that I covered up with my face? So the wire that goes to my face <laughs> actually goes to the volume pot. Okay, so that's going to be um, the middle lug of the master volume. Okay, so that's where that's going to go. And then... You see how on one side of the switch, the bottom side, this is a two-way mini toggle. This is just like the ones we just put on our website. So you see how the bottom one is grounded? And so basically all that does, anytime you ground a guitar circuit, all it does is kill it. Okay? So what you're doing is you're putting this basically in between. This switch is just going in on your output jack in between the pickup and the output jack. That's all it's doing. Super, super simple. So all you're doing is you're grounding one side of the switch. And so when you flip the switch, it kills the signal. That's all you're doing. Super simple stuff. Uh, I'll leave that up there for a minute so you can look at that. And then, um, and actually we're going to, we're going to put these in a, you know, we'll put these in like a, some kind of, course I'll, I'll get a little bit more specific with it um in uh in writing in a blog post and explain it a little bit more but basically what you're doing when you do a kill switch is all you're doing is you're touching the hot to ground so when you turn the switch on it touches the hot to ground and it kills the signal when you let go of the switch it lets it come back that's all you're doing super super simple um but that is one way to wire that switch. This one's really complicated. I'm going to leave this up. Not going to really complicated, but I'm going to leave this up here for a minute, but I'm going to make it available later. This is um, taking two pickups and a three-way switch. So let's say you have a Les Paul and you want to put, or let's say you have a, what would be a better example? Um... Let's say you have a Les Paul Special with two P90s or a Jazzmaster. Uh, Jazzmaster doesn't work. Okay, a Les Paul Special with two P90s is a perfect example. Or a Telecaster. This is an uh, excellent example for a Telecaster. You could add this second switch or this, this separate switch. So to the left, see that little round one? That represents your three-way switch. And then you have your double pull, double throw switch. Now you can't do this with a single pull, single throw switch. You have to have a double pull, double throw switch. And then you can change with that switch from series to parallel, which is super, super fun. Now let me tell you what that does on a Telecaster. If you use this wiring diagram that I just shared with you, on a Telecaster, maybe you drill an extra hole in your little control plate and you, you wire that in and you have sing, you have series to parallel. Parallel is going to be a normal telly, right? Series is going to make it sound like this big, wide humbucker and it's going to give you a bunch of power. It's super, super fun. That is probably one of my favorite guitar tones of all time. And if you have two P90s and you put them in series... Okay, it gets a little noisy, but man, it's like the biggest huge guitar sound ever. It is amazing. It is amazing. Uh, this is a different diagram for kind of the same thing, uh, but like we mentioned, this is within the same pickup. So 
Uh, we will share these drawings later um, where you can have a little bit more time with them because it, there is a lot of fun things to do. Um, another one we did not share here is you can use uh, this whole setup for a coil split. Uh, we have a video on that on YouTube, how to wire up a double to pull double throw switch for a coil split. Excellent example again of why you would want to have two do the same thing. If I have two humbuckers in my guitar and I have it on a three-way switch, I typically use a push pull. And so when we use a push pull switch, it has the same. So just so you're not confused, it has the same wires on it. It just as matter of fact has a knob sticking out of the bottom. But this, the, the arrangement of those six lugs does exactly the same thing on a push pull as it does on this toggle switch right here on an on on situation. Okay. If it was an on on toggle switch, it does exactly the same thing. So it's just sideways with a knob coming out of it. Um, and so you can use the way I do it is I put a master coil split we're on one row of those. I hook up my coil split for my bridge pickup. And on the other row of those, I hook up the coil split for my neck pickup. And when I hit that button, it coil splits both of them. That's what I do. It works really, really well. What's happening over there in YouTube's land? Somebody got inspired because they have a telly under the couch that's waiting for electro guts, as he says. So he appreciated the idea. Oh, excellent. Um, question, can you do the series parallel with a single coil and a humbucker? Yes, you can. If it is a four wire humbucker, you just have to mind how you put it, how you wire it together. Um which gets really fun because you can actually wire a single coil with one of the singles in the humbucker or the whole humbucker. So you can do do that. You have to make sure the phasing is correct. That's the only thing. On all of this stuff, you have to make sure the phasing is correct because there's very, what will happen a lot of times is somebody will hook up a series versus parallel setup and then it will end up being a f out of it'll be out of phase. Does everybody know what out of phase sounds like? Uh, because I could actually show you that too, um, because I have an adjustable out of phase on that cigar box. Um, but if we want to talk about out of phase, we can we can talk about that too. And there are, are there are diagrams for that. I think what I really need to do is I need to come up with a place where I can basically have a bunch of different wiring diagrams for a bunch of different ideas in one place so that if you need them, you can go there and get them. I've been, it's something I've been meaning to do. I think I'm going to have to do it. We'll have to figure that out. I think I even bought the URL for it and I just have never done it. Any more questions happening over there? They said they do understand, but they want you to show them anyway. Oh, out of phase? Apparently. Oh, yeah. I was hoping you'd say so because this guitar is really cool. So, out of phase is when you have two pickups and they are either electrically out of phase, which means the ground is hooked up to the hot on one of them and the hot is hooked up to the hot on one of them. And you know, like the wires are flipped. Okay. That's electrically out of phase, or it could be that the magnets are facing inverted to each other and it's out of phase and it gives you a sound. Oh, maybe that's where the noise is coming from. Yeah. That's where the noise is coming from. It gives you this sound right here. So here's parallel, just normal. Now here is out of phase. Mm -hmm. 
Now, what's really fun about this particular guitar is I have um, an, a second knob on here. It's a stacked volume and tone, but it's not a tone. There is a top secret way of doing this that I don't even know. I mean, I know how it's done, but I kind of don't know how it's done. But anyway, I can actually adjust how much of there's a capacitor and a resistor. I don't know. Anyways, the bottom line is you can make it kind of out of phase. Or we can make it really out of phase. you put some junk on that like uh let's see so i don't play slide but one of my friends that I used to play in a band with used to play this guitar. That's why it sounds a little out of tune because the nut is really, really super high. So this is actually meant to play with slide and you get it a little bit out of phase like that. And then you put some, some dirt on it, play it with a slide and it sounds super fantastic. Like, like Delta blues kind of stuff. Super, super fun. So yeah, out of phase is a super fun sound if you do it on purpose and you, you know, have a, have a purpose for it for sure. <clears throat> so that's that. Um, I didn't really have, well, that was a lot of stuff actually. Uh, let me see if there's anything else that I wanted to add tonight because I did take some notes last week from some questions, but yeah. And people do want to see the wiring diagrams. Okay. And it was requested starting with the easiest to the mo the easiest slash most common to the nuttiest. Okay. No, that sounds fun, actually. Give me some time on that because I want to make sure that we do it properly um, and make it to where it's something easy that you can... Um, that you can do. And if you are in the midst of a wiring project... Uh, make sure you check out our website because, you know, obviously we have all that stuff. Um, and if there is something that you want to do, if there's something you need, let me know. Because, um, like, we just added a couple of switches. To, we just added a switch today. And I don't, it's one of those things where I stock them anyway. And so if you need stuff, let me know. Because uh, I just had somebody call on Saturday saying, hey, man. Um, everywhere else is so expensive and blah, blah, blah. And would you be able to stock a particular pot? And I'm like, absolutely. Yeah. I don't see why not. So we talked about pricing and we, we sorted it out. So if there's something you need, let me know and we'll do what we can to help you out for sure. Um, so yeah, that's it. We've got about 15 minutes left and I am, I think that's everything I could think of. The whole day. You thought a lot today, though. I was super busy. Uh, so we're just going <clears> to. <throat> I was actually going to put a slide in here. Without telling Leslie, but. Um, Leslie started a podcast, everybody. And so all weekend, pretty much this whole weekend, I worked. I worked all weekend. I got up at like. Seven o'clock on Saturday. Okay, eight thirty on Saturday, and um, worked probably till three on shipping stuff and and taking care of Dylan Talks Tone stuff. It's weird because I'm literally like working weird hours of Dylan Talks Tone, like guitar related stuff, because we have so much content coming out that it is like. So I worked probably eight hours on Sunday until eleven probably 10 hours on Sunday 
uh, getting Leslie's podcast finalized and getting all of the stuff together so that she has, um, it's it looks fantastic. Uh, what is it called? Something about a virgin. <laughs> um, the extroverted virgin. Yeah, the extroverted virgin. No, <laughs> so yeah, you'll if you support her on Patreon, you will know exactly what we're talking about because she's got some hilarious behind the scenes outtakes coming that are so funny that like literally we were both crying. It was so funny because the name of her podcast is The Introverted Vegan. But if you can imagine the ways you could mess that up, it is hilarious. We were like completely crying putting together some video content tonight. So I'm sure over on her Patreon page, she will have that. It uh, is uploaded and it's, ready to be viewed. Is it? Oh, yes. okay. Cool. Um, it was really hard for me to push that button, though. Was it? Really hard. Oh, man. I watched it again, and I was like, wow. It was hilarious, the extroverted virgin. Anyway, um, yeah, you'll have to go <laughs> You'll have to go see that. It was really funny, and and... Anyway, she she has a really neat podcast. I'm really excited for her to be doing her own thing. Um, and and it's all about building community, right? I mean, that's why we did the whole... Uh, oh, yeah. Did you notice my... Obviously, you did. Notice my new monitor. Um, I usually... I basically just put it there so I could watch YouTube videos while I was editing video. But I thought, hey, wait a minute. We could put stuff up there. And um, use that for stuff. You know, it's not close enough to, you know, use for videos and, and or for, you know, content during the show. But if I've got things I need to put up there, I want people to remember, like subscribe. Um, you know, it's there. So I'm going to I'm going to do that. And we've got some other stuff coming over the next couple of days. Wait till you see these tone crate. Um, well, you've been listening to see them. Em? Hear them. Hear them. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, these tone crate, uh, what are they called? Profiles for the, the camper. Uh, you've been listening to them and you just didn't even, you didn't even know it. They're, I, they're so my favorite. Oh my goodness. They're my favorite that I've ever used. Yeah. 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 I just rolled off my screen. I was like, I thought I saw a question with the pots and a telly that are touching the shielding. Would it ground out the pickup? Would it ground out the output? I can't read. Okay. Um, yes. You have to be really careful about shielding in a control cavity of a Telecaster. To the point, and this will, if controversy-loving people on the internet are listening right now, I will tell you it is useless. It is largely useless to shield a control cavity on a telecaster it's just not worth it here's the deal <clears throat> the noise doesn't even come from the controls the noise comes from the pickups so the bridge cavity so the bridge the where the bridge pickup goes shield that and ground it okay and then shield the neck pickup cavity and the back side of the pick guard and make sure all of those things touch each other and are continuous across the whole thing. And then don't even worry about shielding with foil anyway, the control cavity of a Telecaster. It will make not one bit of difference. Um, people want to go all into this whole like, yeah, but I need a Faraday cage. There's lots of science and, um, okay, we have a couple minutes. The bottom line is the wavelength of 60 Hertz, which is what most of, or 50 Hertz in Europe and the other parts of the world uh, is mostly what we're trying to get rid of. People will argue with me till the day is over, but EMI is called electromagnetic interference. RFI is called radio frequency interference for a reason. It comes through the air. Okay. It does not come through your cable. It does not come through. It doesn't come through anything. It comes through the air. 
Now it's still 60 hertz because these lights up here that are on are 60 hertz. And so it's coming through the air like it's electromagnetic interference, right? Um, and so what you're trying to do is basically create like a satellite dish to catch electromagnetic interference and then bleed it off to ground before it goes in your pickups and then becomes part of your signal. So those wavelengths that are happening are very, very long. And so you need as much surface area as possible. A Faraday cage does not do anything with a wavelength that is so small, that is so long. And it doesn't do anything when there's no antenna. The antenna is the pickup. It is not the wires in the guitar. Your wires in your guitar are only as long. They're only like, like four inches of wire in a Telecaster. That is not any kind of antenna. You have like thousands of feet on your pickups. It's uh, remember like um, those cheap AM antennas that you used to get, like with a radio. All that was was a wire wrapped around like this plastic ring. It's just a guitar pickup with no magnet in it. That's all it is. And so you're picking up AM stations with literally a wire wrapped around a ring. So your pickup is an AM antenna by nature, by design. It's It just turns into an AM antenna. So in order to... And, and this is actually the way, if you go outside right now and you look at your dish network or your direct TV antenna, all it is, this is crazy because it's exactly the same thing only backwards. All it is, is it's like a guitar pickup. So, you know, it's got the dish and it's got that little arm coming up and it's got that thing that is called a low noise amplifier uh, and basic or a low noise antenna. And what it is, is it's literally got this dish. And it's picking up electromagnetic interference and it is bouncing it to what is pretty much a guitar pickup and an amplifier. And that's how you get your TV signal. So instead of bouncing all that stuff up there to your guitar pickup, put a ground on it right here and bleed it off the ground before it gets to your guitar pickup. That's all you're doing when you shield stuff. So there's no need to put it in the control cavity because it has nothing to do with it. I know that was way more than you bargained for, but that is probably one of my biggest uh, pet peeves and biggest kind of like everybody makes a huge deal out of it. And it's a big waste of time and materials and money. And that stuff is expensive and it'll save you money not to do it. You want another question? Absolutely. I'm pretty sure he meant to say Kemper. He said Keeper. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure he meant Kemper, so just keep that in mind in case this question doesn't make sense. Okay. With the Kemper that has the power amp, what watt speakers do you need? Lots. Um, there's a couple ways to do this. Um, I need to do a video on it. It's 600 watts, right, at 8 ohms. It's 300 watts at 16 ohms. I have a 150 watt speaker and technically I can blow it up. However, the speaker that I selected. So technically if I go over here and just crank this all the way up and I use an overdrive pedal and put tons of input signal into it, I can blow a speaker. I have done it. <laughs> Smoke has come out. Um, but I literally did it on purpose. I got flamed on the internet when I said that. But I needed to know. I just needed to, it was cost me $80 to know, but I needed to know. Um, as much wattage as you can. However, if you get too much wattage, then it sounds like crap. So I have an Eminence Tonker 150 in there. I think that speaker costs about $140 or something right in there, plus shipping. And um, if you want one, let me know. I can get you one. Uh, cause I'm a, a dealer for them. And basically the sensitivity is so high that it's so loud that there's no reason for me to turn it up. It is so loud. So basically that's how I solved the problem was get a speaker that is so loud that 
you never have to turn it up to the point where you're going to blow it up. I've gigged with it that way. Um, I've played in here with it that way. I've mic'd it for recording that way. I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, everyone, again, this is another thing on the internet. Everybody thinks I'm doing it wrong. And I just don't care because I love it and it sounds awesome. Eminence Tonker 150. Uh, if you need more information about that, shoot me a message. And I'll give you an excellent example and a way you can use this with two of them. And then you have 300 watts, 16 ohms, and you never blow anything up. And it is fantastic. Super fantastic. Uh, and somebody wants to know, um, why would they make it like that if most cabinets are 100 watt or less? Because most, because it's not, um, first of all, 600 watts is not of, of class D power is not the same thing as tube power. It's just not, number one. Number two, uh, most people don't use it the way I use it. Most people use it with like line array style setups, like full range. What do they call it? Full range flat response. So it's a different... It, like PA speakers. They're basically just using them like with PA speakers. So it's kind of like a PA power supply, mm -hmm. not a guitar amp, if that makes sense. But the way I use it, it's different. And when you turn on and off cabinet simulation and, you know, use the nerdy stuff in there, you can make it sound exactly like a normal guitar amp that way. And when you slam that A chord or that E chord, it's like air and like vibration and like real, it feels like real like you're standing in front of a stack like that's what you want you don't want headphones it's just not the same <laughs> cool yeah man no great questions super awesome questions actually thank you uh for asking those i appreciate it and they said you should write off your blown speakers as r and d oh trust me i do i do that that has happened more than once um, yeah, I got a lot of ridicule for that. They're like, I can't believe you just blow stuff up. And I'm like, dude, this is how I learned. This is what, this is how everybody learns. I don't think people realize, you know, I was in the power sports industry. Just give you a little off topic here. I was in the power sports industry for a long time. And the, everybody thinks that there's a bunch of guys in white suits in laboratories, like testing every little thing. And no, it's people just like me and you that, learn over time and by experience and the way they learn over time and by experience is uh blowing stuff up and breaking stuff i mean like how hard how much power can this motor take before the piston comes out the side i don't know i guess we're gonna have to find out and that's what we do i mean you just you just figure it out and you know honda and stuff they have all that but most of your like aftermarket companies like you know your exhaust companies and your motor company, like motor building companies and stuff. They're just guys that started in their garage and got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And now they're not in their garage anymore. But the way they learned all that stuff was just blowing stuff up and figuring it out. Like, you know, and so that's what I do and it works. And that, and the thing is, I know 100% for sure <laughs> where the failure point is. It is not, it's not a mathematical not equation, or... right? Like it's not like in theory, I think this thing's going to blow up when no, I know exactly when it's going to blow up. Cause I could tell you from experience. So I, to me, that's better. Right. I, I don't know I, for me anyway. Um, do me a favor. Check out this stuff that I've been pounding sublimity, subliminally into your head all night. Um, Check out the uh, Dylan Talks Tone Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash Dylan Talks Tone. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel if you are new here. That would be awesome. And um, yeah, that Patreon thing's cool because it's going to make it part. I I'm so excited about it from the, the community perspective. What we're building here and then taking it there and taking it to the next level is just super, super cool. So I invite you to do that. Make sure you check out Leslie's podcast because... She has a podcast that just makes it worth checking out by itself. Um, and so I appreciate everybody listening to us tonight. Um, whether you watch some behind the scenes stuff on Patreon this week, whether you see it on YouTube, 
whether you watch us on facebook.com slash Dylan talks tone or Instagram, uh, have fun playing and, uh, we will definitely see you around the internets this week. Mm -hmm.